Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 3. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. The NLCA provides unparalleled opportunities for its members through industry education, construction information, government advocacy, and networking events. The NLCA is building Newfoundland and Labrador. For more information, visit nlca.ca. Well, folks, welcome to a very special edition of Gale Force Winds. When we started Gale Force Winds in December 2020, quite frankly, we didn't have a real idea of who we were going to interview, but we uh, morphed into interviewing primarily entrepreneurs. Um, We've deviated from that periodically, but tonight I am extremely excited to be interviewing um, five very, very creative people, and uh, they are creative in the visual arts. So um, this is also the most people we've ever had on one episode. Uh, I believe we had four one time when we were in Greece, in Greece on a on a HMCS Montreal. Uh, but this is five, so I'm looking forward to it. I think what we'll do um, is kick it over to you, Greg, just to introduce the group as a whole, and then I will ask each individual person to introduce themselves quickly, and then we'll just have a nice chat about what it is you do and what the plan is for Newfoundland. So I personally, as a Newfoundlander, am incredibly excited to welcome the five of you to this province. So Greg, let's uh, just kick it off. Sure. Well, we're, I got to tell you, we're very excited to be coming to Newfoundland. Uh, We started this uh, plein air group probably, well, just over 15 years ago. And we've traveled across Canada uh, and painted on the other two coasts of Canada uh, so we're super stoked to be coming and paint on the on the east coast. Um, like I said, we've we've been traveling and plein air painting across Canada for 15 years, and it's the only thing that the five of us actually do together. When we're we're all from Saskatoon, and when we're not painting together, we really don't see each other. We all come from really varied backgrounds. And uh, when we're together, it's actually quite geeky. All we talk about is, oh, my God, what what color blue is that? How did you mix that? It's it's just all about the painting. And when we were younger, 15 years ago, we we used to get out of bed at uh, 530 or 4 in the morning to paint the sunrise. And we would paint till the sun set. And uh, in Canada, as you probably know, uh, that's 1130 at night. And we would honestly just paint all day we're not quite as vigorous anymore uh but pretty close but we might uh you know take a little break in the afternoon now <laughs> i uh i promise i'm not going to try and interrupt too much but i do i think there's a question that people that may not know what you said is plein air just give me a dis- description of that for those that may not know what plein air painting is uh, plein air painting just means painting outside, essentially. Uh, it was sort of uh, spearheaded in in France at the end of the 1800s when suddenly you could get paint in tubes as opposed to have to mix all these these raw colors yourself. And so then artists like Monet and Van Gogh and all these guys started going outside and painting outdoors. And so that was sort of the dawn of the plein air painting movement. And... Uh, the the great painters or the painters that we like from Canada, like Tom Thompson and A.J. Casson and uh, the Group of Seven plan and Emily Carr, they all did a lot of plein air painting. Interesting. All right. So that's the introduction. There's so much more to talk about. But so, Greg, in terms of the, the you know, your background, give us give us your your elevator pitch about what brought you to this point. And then I'm going to go around around the horn, so to speak. Brought me to this point, or the yeah, you, yeah, you personally. Um, well, it really started. Um, my wife bought me a, a birthday present when I was uh, in. I think I turned forty, and it was to go to this week long art workshop. And I had always sort of had an interest in art. Um, you know, I drew and painted in high school, and then got sidetracked playing music for, uh, you know, twenty years. Uh, so I was really excited, and and when I got up there, uh, Paul Trotje, one of the other members here, was uh, the director of the camp, and the very first week I was there, um, I met Camp Forrester, and then as 
time went on, for some reason, we all ended up at this Kenderdine art camp at one time or another. And there was very few men. So we decided we should probably hang together and start this group. Fantastic. Thank you for telling us that. I'm going to go around on my screen and Paul Trache, you're next. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the inspiration. Uh, my name is Paul Trotze. Um I don't have much to say about myself, um, but basically uh, the group we met at Kenderdine campus, I, I started painting and drawing at a very young age with my father, who's also a member of this group. And uh, we would go out to the riverbanks in Saskatoon and, and paint on a Sunday afternoon. So that was kind of my birth into it, trained as a arts educator and went through the whole process. Eventually, I found myself working at the University of Saskatchewan. Did that for a number of years and worked my way up and eventually became the uh, um, coordinator of a program which was traveling all the way across Western Canada, teaching ecological and environmental education. And then uh, was seconded into the position of director for the Kenderdine campus because I had both a little bit of a science ecological background and the art background. And that's what the intent was of the campus was to kind of merge the idea of art and science together. So I took over Kenderdine in 2005 um, and ran it right until I think it was 2012. Ken, you can correct me by all means if any of my dates are wrong. Um, uh, the campus ran until 2012 when the University of Saskatchewan then president decided to close the campus down and suddenly I found myself without a position. So I looked around, was considering a couple of other positions with SAS Polytech, which is our technical institute with the university and eventually decided that I would open up my own store after going to school and getting some entrepreneurship uh, training. Uh, and then launched my store called Hughes Art Supply in Saskatoon in 2000, what would that be, 2014, January of 2014. So I've been at that for a number of years now, nine years, and uh, it's flourishing, doing very well. I'm still an educator. I still teach on a very regular basis. And um, yeah, I guess when I ran into these guys initially, Ken, Cam and I were out fishing on a boat and all we talked about, instead of catching fish, we talked about how light was hitting the trees. <laughs> and I made up a word called vivify. Because <laughs> when the light bends around the earth, uh, you get that long red light band coming out and it hits the green and it complements it and it just makes it electric. So that, that word vivified kind of stuck. And we decided at that time we should just paint together in the evening rather than fish. I love it. What a great introduction, Paul. Thank you very much. And there's a gentleman uh, on my screen sitting next to you, uh, Roger Trache. He is also known as Zoom user. Um, I am going to turn it over to you, Roger. Howdy. You have a connection uh, to Paul, by the way, too, right? Tell everyone about that. I, well, I try to tell everybody he's my father, but I can't seem to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, got acquainted with the group uh, while in another capacity, probably, but uh, Paul was there and I was up visiting at Kenderdine. And at the time, I was teaching art classes for the uh, College of Education, or pardon me, the art department here uh, at the University of Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. And uh, these guys started talking about uh, going out painting in the evening. And uh, I thought that was kind of strange because I was used to going to art classes and uh, getting things rolling. Uh, anyway, uh, it sounded like a, a kind of a neat idea. And uh, as I got engaged, I, uh, I became en engrossed with uh, uh, going out with the group and uh, that was sort of the, the start of it all. One of the first things that uh, came to uh, happen was uh, we applied for a grant and uh, went up into Ivavik National Park um, on a painting excursion. And uh, that sort of set the, the, the ball going. If anybody wants to know about uh, that event, uh, Greg is uh, is a great producer of uh, Zoom videos 
for uh, for the group, and uh, it's well documented there. Um, in the meantime, uh, I uh, continued teaching at the uh, for the uh, USCAD program, which is University of Saskatchewan uh, uh, certificate program, and. Uh, the um, I forget how many years I, I taught in that program, but uh, one course led to uh, five other ones. And so I was doing uh, uh, art history and uh, painting and drawing and uh, printmaking and so on. And uh, eventually uh, I reached that golden age when uh, some people just take a little rest. You don't know what it's about, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't done it yet. Anyway, uh, the uh, I am now uh, one of those retired fellows. Uh, I still uh, paint, and uh, thank gosh for the, uh, the the activities of the group. We get to go all over the place and and uh, paint, and uh, I I love to paint outdoors. And uh, I've been known to get lost in it. And sometimes people look at my paintings and I think maybe that's what they think it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm lost out to it. Anyway, uh, I'm the, uh, as I said, the youngest guy in the group. And uh, <laughs> I've, I haven't gotten to uh, dyeing my beard and my, my hair yet, but uh, I'm just a bit of a, Uh, my wife is uh, tutoring me from the other room. Oh, maybe she's talking on the phone. Anyway. <laughs> we don't edit that stuff out, just so you know. <laughs> okay, I've just uh, disembobbled all of this, and I'll uh, I'll dance along and say, well, I'm a member of the Men Who Paint, and uh, it's been a wonderful experience uh, collaborating with these guys. Well. Thank you for that, uh, Roger. And you know, you say you get lost, lost in your work, lost outside. Please don't get lost in Newfoundland. It's a very, very large province. <laughs> so uh, I think that, I, I think they're going to put a, a dog tag on me and uh, and a leash. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll put one of them Apple uh, things. What do you call those? Those trackers. Put one of them yeah. on you. That would work. That yeah. would work. I'd, if I put a speaker on it, maybe I'd know where I was at. <laughs> so next next in line is Cam Forster. Cam, uh, introduce yourself. Hey there. Um, boy, let's see. If I go back to the 1970s, 1976 to 1984, I was a draftsman working for my dad who had an architectural firm in the city. And uh, I love to draw. My dad and mom always seem to be drawing and painting, and they're always involved in the arts. And then in 1984, things kind of dried up in the construction in Saskatchewan. And uh, I decided to leave that. And uh, I'm a bit of a golf nut, so I went to work at the golf course. And I stayed there for 32 years. So I, I was a golf pro for a number of years and then a club manager until 2017 uh, when I retired so I could paint full time. So my painting, uh, my very first art show was in Maple Creek in 1988. Everything was black and white. And then in the early 90s, I met a gentleman, uh, Ralph Crone, that introduced me to watercolor. And then he said to me, if you want to be anything in art, you need to paint in oil and you need to paint big. So I saw a pamphlet that said, painting the Emma Lake landscape in oil. And Emma was a home. We had a family cabin there. And I thought, this is perfect. So I signed up, went to the Kenderdine campus. First person I meet is Paul. And and uh, Ken was there, and like Paul said, we went out fishing that night, and uh, man, the rest is history. We've been hanging out together for well more than fifteen years now, and it's just it's it's just a fun trip. Everything we do is fun. That's, That's it. My elevator <laughs> was four floors. It was a quick story. <laughs> That's great, no problem. Um, next next in line is Ken Van Rees, and uh, he can tell us where he is. Well, I'll, I'll tell everybody. It's a little late where he is right now. Uh, you're in Vienna, Ken, right now? Sorry, Jerry, I didn't catch up, but yes, uh, you probably said that I'm in Vienna, and it's probably, well, it's after one in the morning. But anyway, um, I, am, uh, I moved to Saskatoon in 1990. 
uh, and I became a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. My background was in forestry and soils. And uh, so I did a lot of field trips for students and stuff, and I had to develop a new class uh, in the early 2000s, and it was called Soils and Broil Landscapes. And uh, by chance meeting uh, with my mother, going to an art gallery, I was faced with all this art, and I had never really been exposed to art because I was the science guy. And uh, at that art gallery, I had this light bulb go off saying, why don't you include? Uh, I said to myself, well, I don't know if I could really incorporate art because I don't know anything about art. And so I, what could I do? And she gave me some suggestions. And so I tried it out in class and it was a huge success. We're breaking up a little bit on uh, Ken's Learn connection. About... We're breaking up a little bit on your connection, okay. Ken. Yeah. Could, could one of us just fill in the words and the story <laughs> will be pretty interesting. <laughs> the part, any of the parts that he missed, Greg, did you want to fill in what he said? <laughs> I think so people got it. Videos. Yeah. So, Cam, if he was in an elevator, the elevator would be stopping and starting, I guess, hey? Yeah, I, yeah. Ride. <laughs> Ken, uh, not to cut you off, I don't know if you're finished or not, probably not, but it's uh, it's the connection is, is a little bit sketchy. See if we can get your last point in. But I, I uh, just wanted to say that I ended up teaching this club. <laughs> uh, moved on from there, so. Well, I think you'll be a little disappointed in this recording. Unfortunately, the connection is not giving uh, you the best uh, connection, but we'll we'll do our best to uh, to fill in the blanks. Uh, the the other four know you well, so maybe <laughs> you can nod periodically. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: uh, a man who's done his put his life in the forestry and soils. Hopefully, you're not too disappointed. You are coming to the rock, so. Uh, I was going to joke that there's no trees or soil, but there actually is some trees and soil. But uh, anyway, well, again, you know, gents, I'm I'm incredibly excited and privileged, feel privileged that you've chosen Newfoundland. I'm going to speak on behalf of every Newfoundlander. I've seen your work, and uh, I will tell everyone that menwhopaint.com is your website, and the work that you've done is stunning. Um, I'm going to talk to you, Greg, a little bit there, because we've alluded to it in your introductions, but you, and I think it was Roger who said you went to uh, Ivavik National Park. Was that the inspiration for you? It's one thing to paint outside. It's another thing to paint in places all over the world. Tell us a little bit about that. I think I think that Ivavik really was sort of the realization that that we could um, we could use this to travel and paint across Canada. Uh, it was uh, so far north, so far above the Arctic Circle. It was an experience that I, I Roger had uh, had taught in Alaska, but I don't think the rest of us had really had that much of a uh, Arctic experience before. And it was a part of Canada that we I had never imagined I would get to see. And it was interesting hearing the people that live there talk about, oh, you're from Southern Canada, which is a term I had never heard before. And, you know, it just made, I, I, for me, it made me realize how little I knew about this country. Yeah. And um, and also just, I we all, we made it through 10 days staying in tents, uh, living together in the Yukon. And uh, never had a crossword. We had nothing but fun the whole time. And we thought, you know what? That was our trial by fire. You know, could not be. What what could you throw at us that we would get, you know, uh, our knickers in a knot? Nothing. And and it's been really, it's been twenty years. We've been painting together, and it's just been amazing painting and doing exhibitions together. You know, three times a year, all over the country, when we can manage it, and it's just been fabulous. It's funny, you know, we've had many conversations leading up to this and, uh, you know, Gail Force Winds is very supportive of what you're doing. Uh, I remember, and I may have mentioned this to you, when Alan and I traveled to the Caribbean and we were on the HMCS Harry to Wolf and we asked a lot of the, you know, 20-year-olds, 
you know, what, what place would you say has been the most enjoyable for you? Thinking it would be the place we we're in right then and there. Everyone said the Arctic. They, they sailed through the Northwest Par Passage. Uh, that would have been November, I believe, of last year or October, or maybe it was the summer. I can't remember which. But anyway, yeah, that really struck me. And I agree with you. It's interesting listening to you say that, you know, I haven't seen much of the North. I've been in, in Labrador, but uh, so that that's, I, I can just sense the awe that you all experienced. Well, it's like a huge equalizer, you know, because, because it's so barren, because there's nothing really up there, you are just equal with every other being that is around you. It is a really uh, interesting feeling, you know? Well, on that, I got a question. I mean, I'm looking at Cam right now, and I, I assume, Cam, that's one of your paintings right behind you, right? Well, uh, no, it's it's one I painted, but it's a copy of a group of seven painting I did years ago, and it's just always hung in the house. So. But what strikes me is how colorful that is. And you're talking, Greg, about barren. So I'm thinking when you, like, maybe you you all felt the same way. You know, what are you going to paint when you get there? Is it all white? You know, like, tell me, <laughs> tell us, tell the rest of Canada, the southerly Can Canadians, what, what it was like. I, I think that a, a part of that, Jerry, and to answer, well, from my perspective, um, it's not so much, it's the feeling of the landscape that's around you. And how do you imbue color into that? So uh, you might be faced with like, we're, we, took a helicopter up to a spot called uh, Inspiration, uh, was that Inspiration Point or Halfway yeah. to Heaven? Yes. And uh, at that point, all you saw was gray, gray and some shades of brown. Um, but it's how that made you feel. So trying to get that color going within that feeling was part of what my process was, especially in the North. I don't know, guys, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it, uh, the thing that I found wasn't so much about the color, just the shapes. I, I I tend to throw color at anything, but it's just the the shapes. So the area had never been glaciated, right? So there's these massive tours that stuck out of the ground, thousand feet rocks. It's like landscape you could never ever imagine. I think um, I may speak for Ken on this one as well. When when I think when we had our biggest problem was painting in Herschel, Saskatchewan. You know, we came out of the boreal forest and went to a place that was <laughs> three and a hundred miles, and you can see. And you really can see your dog run away for three days and, and there's nothing there. And it took us a couple of days to figure it out. But eventually, you know, we figured that's, out. That's, kind of, that's really kind of been our journey on all of our trips. You know, we when we first went to the West Coast, uh, uh, we had not really painted uh, the ocean at all. And it's a whole thing to learn how to paint. And it took us a couple of days to get our feet under us and, you know, learn figure out how to deal with it. And, and that's part of the enjoyment of the traveling as well as just being in all these fabulous places in Canada. So on that note, do you do you paint relatively close to each other or do you come together at night and then discuss the challenges of the terrain, the water and all that? Is that how you do it? Depends on what we had for supper the night before. You know, if it's beans, we're, we're miles apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. That's yeah, I think I think that is a part of it, though, Jerry. That um, a lot of times we're problem solving together. Um, we do challenges out in the field, like okay, today you can't use white paint, or today you can only use these complementary colors, and you've got to paint the whole day in those complementary colors. So we're continually challenging ourselves technically, but when it comes to painting the ocean or painting the dense mosses that were in there, we all learn tricks and trades that we shared with each other and helped each other to grow. And that's the beautiful part about this group is we have continued to grow together on an ongoing basis. Interesting. It's, uh, the, let me ask this. So as you walk around in your daily life, is painting constantly taking up space in your head? Are you <laughs> seeing like, I, I just, you're, you're five of you are just so passionate. I have passions as well, but there's times when my head goes blank. Painting is a whole other thing, but this, I, I'm getting a sense of that. You start to see everything differently. You know, when you, when you're doing a painting, you know, you're not looking at your canvas and drawing a tree out of your head that you think you're looking at the tree that you're drawing. And it's funny after 15 or 20 minutes of painting a tree, 
you're, there's an intimacy there. Something you're connected to it. You actually know the shapes of it. You can see the knots and you can see the way the shadows happen on it. And, you know, after a few days of painting like that, everything you look at, everything you look at, you see it differently. I always say an artist sees things differently than someone else will. Yeah. We see different things. Yeah. yeah. Especially from painting, because you need to break everything down into shapes and values. And so you almost strive to not look at it as a tree. You strive to look at it as a collection of shapes and shadows, if you will. And um, and if you if, the more you paint, the more you look at everything sort of yeah. like that. Yeah. And those shapes and shadows within other shapes and shadows and colors. Yeah. That's just, it's kind of a, a puzzle piece almost. I don't want to simplify it that much, but really that's kind of how we're looking at it. How's that tree sit within the landscape and what, what around it augments that tree? It's interesting listening to you talk, you know, Paul, especially on that note, you know, life is so interesting. And I think, do you, how fulfilling do you find this, this endeavor that you, you've, you've, the five of you have embarked on? Well, I think for me, given the choice, if, if, you know, I was able to paint all the time and spend time with these guys all the time, uh, that would be right up my wheelhouse. I mean, we all have jobs or, well, there's a number of us that are retired now, but we work so that we can go out and paint, spend time with our families and paint. And uh, I guess the dream job would be to, to create all the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, Cam, throw it to you. You mentioned the Group of Seven. I've been to the Group of Seven. It's in Kleinberg, I believe. Is that where they're? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I And I was in my 20s and uh, in the Navy at the time. So there are some memories that I do have of that time in my life. Um, <laughs> the one thing that, if I remember correctly, struck me was how big the paintings are. And it, I couldn't figure out how you could possibly be so close to something so big and actually produce something so beautiful. Can you give me any inkling of how that could be done? Is that, yeah, Cam, I'm asking you. I don't know. You're asking I, me that question. Is, am I right? It was, it, was, it was the group of seven that painted huge pictures, right? That's them? They, they did. And then, well, the big works are studio works. You know, they, they did a lot in their plan area, in Algoma area and things when they're riding the rails, where they're, they're doing small that they called panels like eight by 10 size or, or 11 by 14. And, you know, they're easy to transport and move around. And then they could take those panels or studies and then reuse them in a studio space um, to create a bigger work from them. So in the studio, they've got enough room to step back from it, you know, reach your arm out straight and have a, a you know, put, put a stroke that makes a, a purpose on the, on the painting rather than just sort of mucking about. Yeah. So, and, and when you're painting plein air, you don't have that option. You, you have to get it down fairly quickly because the shadows the, wind, the it are changing all the time. The scene is changing in front of you. Sure. Uh, bugs are collecting on your panel. Uh, it's raining. All of those things. Like Mother Nature always has a hand in your painting when you're when you're plein air painting. That's surprising, Greg. Uh, uh, no, sorry, that's really surprising. In Newfoundland, we know nothing about Mother Nature. <laughs> I, I assure you there's many people that are rooting for the five of you but god bless you there could be anything thrown at you in the in the two weeks you're here it's uh quite the spot we've kind of discussed a bunch of that let me let me move in the interest of time let me move into a little bit about i guess Newfoundland and uh, first of all what does it mean to you coming here and and second of all we'll talk a little bit about kind of the logistics of what what it is that you're going to do when you're here so first of all you know what does it mean to you to come to this rock out in the eastern shore we've well, been well, go ahead cam oh i wasn't sure if that was directed at someone so uh, not really yeah. anyone Anyone? Well, you know, just the whole country is so spectacular. It's funny how we we want to break it into to provinces, but you know, every every place in this country is spectacular. Whether it's Grasslands National Park or Ivavik or Haida Gwaii, Newfoundland, there's just so many places to see. We're, we're so fortunate to be able to travel to do that. Uh, for me, um, my mom grew up in Cornerbrook. Uh, it's a place I've never been. Uh, I'd love to see it, and uh, it. They do a great job, Newfoundland and Labrador, about the, all the ads on TV and all it does it just makes me want to go there for gosh sake. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Anyone yeah, else I, want to touch that? 
Well, you know, I I grew up in the West. So, uh, you know, I've been further than Toronto only once. Uh, I, I went to play a gig with my wife in Halifax once. Um, and the East Coast, I think there's a, I think there's a, a similarity between prairie people and and people who live maritimers, if you want to call them that. I think there's a, a real connection with those people. I think they are people of the land more so than than other parts of the country, perhaps. So I'm excited about that part of it. Yeah, I, were, I had an, uh, an unusual experience, I guess. Uh, I, I got to know a lot of the Newfoundlanders when I worked in Fort McMurray in uh, Alberta. And uh, after I was teaching at the college there and at the in the evenings, I'd always go to this favorite cafe, which was run by a gal from Newfoundland. And uh, a lot of her staff were likewise. And they also uh, started a, a Friday night uh, gatherings where uh, people would uh, go on stage and sing and uh, perform and so on. And uh, that grew from Friday nights to Saturday nights. And uh, it was a, a great experience. Uh, preceding that, I had had uh, associations through another uh, endeavor that I was involved with, which was a Yorkton Film Festival. And at that festival, I got to know a couple of guys from uh, the film industry that uh, came from Newfoundland. And so uh, along the way, uh, I've, been, I've been very much aware of the, the Newfoundland uh, uh, spirit. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to going there because they, uh, the nearest I got to Newfoundland was uh, an, uh, on another island just off uh, offshore there in Nova Scotia. And I uh, uh, was in between uh, conference dates I had some time on my hands, so I drove to the, uh, the North Shore. And I was standing there at the ferry and contemplating whether I could get over to Newfoundland for a, a quick visit and then get back to the to the conference. And, and that didn't pan out, but uh, it always uh, bugged me that I hadn't made the plunge. So, uh, yeah, it uh, it's interesting how you come to these, these things. And... Uh, Newfoundland is uh, ever present on our TV screens because the uh, the advertisements are absolutely amazing. Interesting. It's a it's a small uh, population, only five hundred thousand. So I uh, I'm always curious to how effective they're. They must do some well with the little budget they have to get it out on all the screens. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Paul, did you want to make a, a point? And maybe Ken will give you a shot too. We'll see if the the Wi-Fi works or not. <laughs> no, I all I so. all I was going to say is that um, Newfoundland, of course, as a child, you're in a geography class and you're learning about Canada and you're, what is that big island up over there? Oh, that's Newfoundland, right? And then CBC, you hear Newfoundland time, and there's this whole mystique behind it. Turns out that. My cousin marries a fella from Newfoundland who's working in Saskatchewan, and and he's harping on me constantly. You guys got to come to Newfoundland. You guys got to come to Newfoundland to paint. I'm like, whatever, whatever. They end up there. They're there for this last year. Worked out really well that that he, Paul Joy, is going to be able to travel with us while we go around Newfoundland. So he's kind of our guide, and everything really fell together beautifully for us to get there. The timing was good. We're out of COVID. All of those things were kind of aligned to get us there. Now, being that kid in grade five, looking at your geography map, I'm going to be able to be there. That's that's pretty special. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Paul. And you know what? I'm really happy you mentioned that because I would be very remiss if my childhood friend who helped get this off the ground with all of you wasn't mentioned. Um, yeah, Paul Joy, his wife, Nicole, Paul served his country in the RCMP for many years, and uh, I'm I, he's back here for a year right now. Pretty exciting adventure they're on, and he's bringing you guys here, and that's phenomenal. So thank you, Paul and Nicole, for making that happen. Yeah. Ken, want to give it a shot? Just see how the Wi-Fi works here. <laughs> Frozen right from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, first night. 
the first night I stayed uh, in a in a guy from St. John's, Newfoundland. He always talked about flipper pie. And so I don't know if I'll see it or not, but. <laughs> Did he screech you in? Ken, did he screech you in? The Vienna connection is is a challenge. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I will just, say... We'll just overdub something hilarious over that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a seal there. Um, I will say this, Ro Roger. Uh, I, 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 as a Newfoundlander, and anyone watching this who's a Newfoundlander, will be very impressed with the pronunciation of the name Newfoundland. Um, many, many people mangle the name and it's understand Newfoundland and you, you know, that's something that Roger has nailed it. I haven't heard anyone else mess it up, but just this is, it's always this little educational piece that uh, people will talk about. And uh, the other advice, stay away from the word Newfie. That can be really challenging. So we won't, <laughs> we won't go down that road. There's a whole history behind that one. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so here we are. I mean, it's an incredible legacy that you uh, five are putting together. And as I said, we're excited you come to Newfoundland. Um, from the itinerary that I was told last week, you're you're arriving here May 23rd. Uh, that's when you start. Tell us a little bit, someone jump in there and tell us a little bit about when you're coming and what it is you're going to do when you're here. Uh, well, I think we, yeah, we arrive on the 22nd or 23rd, uh, 23rd. I think all of us will be here. Finally of May, uh, we're going to paint in St. John's for one day, uh, just to make sure we have all our stuff arriving there <laughs> before we head out. And then we're driving to gross morn and we're going to paint there for five or six days. I should just look at the schedule here. And, um, then the goal, well, we were super excited about trying to get to see some icebergs. So we were hoping to go to Dwellingsgate, um, but iceberg season may be finished by the time we get there. Apparently it's happening quite early this year, uh, but that's the plan to be up up around that area. Um, Larch Harbor is another place we're going to. And then we're going to sort of paint our way back to St. John's. And uh, then we're having an exhibition. Actually, uh, at the Peter Lewis Gallery on the uh, 2nd and 3rd of June. Uh, it's a fundraiser uh, for St. Bon. And um, that's going to be really exciting because we'll get to meet, uh, hopefully we'll get to meet some other artists. We've been sort of touching base with some other Newfoundland artists and uh, hopefully we'll get to make some connections and maybe even get to paint with them around the St. John area, St. John's area. Well, I'm excited for you. You know, I don't know Peter Lewis personally, but I've seen his work and I know he's an incredibly passionate painter. Um, yeah. So that's June 2nd and 3rd, correct? Yeah. And it will be, the exhibition is going to be at his gallery or is it going to be at St. Bonds? I can't remember. No, it's going to be at his gallery. Okay. So um, what you say, it's a fundraiser. Give us a sense of how many paintings will it be? Is it one per person you're going to have? Or are you going to have multiples? I, I can't even fathom what it is you're going to be presenting to the public. Give us that piece. Go ahead, Cam. <laughs> no, it's funny you say that. I think to our trip to Germany, and they, they arranged to have all the canvases there for us. And there's a yep. video that Greg has, and it shows the camera pat, panning over the canvases. And there were, what, 160 canvases or something? What I think I think it was 145 canvases we yeah. went through. We, we were there for 10 days, and uh, I think they were looking at us a little bit strange when we <laughs> arrived because they brought in all this canvas, and they're like, mm, "Really, you're going to paint that many in 10 days?" And I, I, how many do we have left? Like, very few. So yeah, I think we had 15 show. left in total, and. The reality of it is that when you're up in the morning and you start painting, you do a painting in the morning and, you know, it might be not completely completed in the field, but it usually is. Come back for breakfast, then you go out again until lunch. We eat lunch in the field, paint right up until supper time or until we can't see our canvases anymore. And then 
we uh, have our supper and go to bed. I mean, that's the routine. That's what we do. Um, so we're painting all the time. Wow. wow. So I think, wow. yeah, I think we, we told the gallery that we would have between five and eight paintings each. So there'll be, there should be, you know, between 25 and 40 works at the exhibition. I'm so glad I asked the question, but I, I literally, if this wasn't a good chair, I'd probably fall off it. I'm shocked at the <laughs> prolific nature of the five of you. Yeah, it's, we just don't stop. That's the one thing about our group that is part of the reason why we we gel so well together is because we have the same opinions. We we work our jobs, but when we get together, we want to paint. Yeah. And it's it's a blistering schedule, but you know, sometimes it can get a little difficult, but that's what we want to do. We want to be out there. We want to be capturing as much of what we're seeing and what we're experiencing as we can. And uh, and uh, because we don't like we go out three times a year, maybe. And so there's a finite amount of time we spend together. And I think we all realize that we we learn from each other and we all benefit from the the sort of energy that all of us working together generates. And uh, so it's really precious when we're together. The, the geography of Newfoundland is difficult, as you've probably learned. Is it common for you to move around as much or is the, are you taking advantage of the fact that you're coming this far east that you're going to squeeze in as much as you can? Or do you, do you spread out normally like this? Um, I, I don't think quite, I don't think we're, we've done as much driving as we're probably going to do on this trip. Yeah. Although last summer we were painting in the Rockies and we were staying in Canmore and it wasn't out of the norm for us to have to drive two or three hours to get to a location that we wanted to paint at. So, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, Gross Morn is a lot further than that from St. John's. <laughs> I, th I think I told a story when I worked for a Montreal based company, a lady said she had three days to visit 16 properties that we owned. And I said, <laughs> ma'am, there's two flights and a minimum of 10 days just to see them. So three days, anyway, she didn't come. <laughs> um i just you know want to say thank you um i think that what you're doing is so inspiring and i think that the people of newfoundland are going to be in for one heck of a treat when the five of you get together um anything else that you'd like to say before we clue up this conversation I, I think we're we're just super stoked to be coming. I mean, that is a huge deal for us. And we've been working towards this for well over a year now. Nothing happens easily when you're working with five different schedules. But this works. Um, we are all so excited to be there and so excited to experience Newfoundland and its rawness. Yeah. Well, five of you are coming. The icebergs are here early. Hopefully, uh, I forgot to mention Capelin uh, until tonight prior to getting on. Hopefully the Capelin are rolling and the whales are jumping and the wind is not howling. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We, uh, we've we got a lot of people rooting for you. Uh, again, on behalf of Newfoundland and Labrador, um, thank you for doing what you do and thank you for coming here. I can't wait to uh, see what comes out of this. And uh, I've got a pretty busy schedule myself, but I'm hoping to get out and get some footage of what you're doing. I may not be able to make it to the West Coast, but uh, I'll get some some of the inspiration on the East Coast. Again, gentlemen, thank you very much. Ken Van Rees, thank you for joining us from Vienna, which is uh, getting on after close to 1.30 a.m. your time. Uh, folks, Men Who Paint. It's menwhopaint.com. Um, I encourage you to go on that website, have a look. Uh, we are in for an incredible experience with the five men who paint. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Jerry. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. You, Jerry. See you soon. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.